We welcome you to Oxford, Mississippi on a Thursday night for some college hoops action on the SEC Network. A tale of two different teams here at the Pavilion at Ole Miss, the number one squad in the country. South Carolina, 7-0 in SEC play, taking on the winless Ole Miss Rebels here at the Pavilion at Ole Miss. We welcome you courtside Seth Austin alongside Lindsey Roy. Lindsey, the South Carolina team was supposed to be a year away. They had the number one recruiting class in the country, three freshmen in the starting lineup. But here they are, 7-0, one win away from 20 already on the season. Yeah, they have completely surprised everybody. But when you get a bunch of competitors on the team and put them in there and let them play together, this is what you expect. I mean, they play together as a unit and just – Awesome. Yeah, they can beat you in a bunch of different ways as well. They've got the guard play to get in the lane. They set up each other really, really well. They're dominant in the low post, scoring 89 points per game through seven games in SEC play. That's up from their average in the non-conference as well. They've been so impressive here in 2020. Yeah, it's like you said, Seth, you can't pick one spot to point out with South Carolina because they really do it all over the court. Offensive and defensive end, they just play so well together, unstoppable. The stats back that up as well, Lindsay. You can see blocks per game, offensive rebounds, three-point percentage. Whether it's the hustle stats or the scoring in general, they're talented and they play hard, and the stats back that up. They are top ten, top five in some of the most important categories in the NCAA. Ole Miss, again, 0-7, 7-13, coming off of the loss against Mississippi State on Sunday. They're going to need the junior, Deja Cage, to be that scorer she was in non conference play averaging 13 points per game you might see her try to get going early yeah when you get stuck in a rut like Ole Miss is right now you really start looking for your leaders to step up and when I think about a leader on Ole, Miss, Ole Miss's team is Deja Cage I want her to come out of the gate early like you said take those shots put some points on the board you can see there by our stats she can do it 14 double digit games in 20 contests, she's who this team's going to be looking for. Saw her drop 30 earlier this season against Louisiana Tech. We'll see if 31 can go out and try to put up the points again here on a Thursday evening in Oxford. The Rebels rocking the powder. Blues here taking on the number one team in the country. It'll be Banks in Boston at the jump. Balls in the air. We're underway at the pavilion at Ole Miss. Mimi Reed and the Rebels will start things off with possession. See the Rebels operate the offense here, looking to get something going early. Can't fall behind against the team as good as South Carolina. This is talented freshman Jayla Alexander handing off to Tori Lewis. And the aforementioned Deja Cage is going to reset the offense. No luck so far for Ole Miss. This is Lewis putting the ball on the floor. It's taken away by Boston. Early turnover force by South Carolina. Cook, Beal, and Boston. All Americans at the high school level, all starting on an SEC team here this year with the two seniors, Herbert Harrigan and Taisha Harris, who's closely watching Jayla Alexander. The Rebels roll out the following five. Reed, Alexander, Cage, Lewis, and Dominique Banks, the junior from Atlanta, Georgia. Second time Ole Miss has utilized this starting lineup. They played with this group against Georgia. That was a close game to start SEC play. South Carolina, on the other hand, Lindsay has the same starting lineup in all 21 games this year. Yeah, no, so, well, actually it was a surprise for Coach Staley to not switch it up because she thought that if she was going to have to come into this with all the freshmen, the good recruiting class, and figure it out. But she said that they've earned, her, earned their spots so far this season. She, they've given her no reason to sl slack up. Here's one of those freshmen, Cook, kicks to Harris, extra pass into the corner for Beal. Harris, the all-time leader in assists in South Carolina history, won't get one there in the battle down low with Herbert Harrigan and Lewis. Don Staley, the head coach at South Carolina, her 12th season in Columbia. 7-13 win percentage all-time in SEC games, second all-time only to Pat Summit, who won 87% of her league games at Tennessee. Mimi Reed from the Bronx, New York, number two here, working away. Rebels swinging around with Deja Cage, single digits on the shot clock. She doesn't have much room with Beal guarding her. Beal will draw the best offensive player on the opponent's team as just a freshman up for the challenge, and she's watching Deja Cage here this evening. Harris spins away from the defense. Offensive rebound for South Carolina, one of the best teams in the nation when it comes to to rebounding. In fact, the best team when it comes to offensive rebounding rate. This will be Aaliyah Boston earning a trip to the line after the offensive board here. 
No, Ole Miss has their work cut out for them on the defensive end, especially with the offensive board. South Carolina has that height advantage, and they're very athletic. Boston misses the first of the two free throws here. The freshman from the St. Thomas, excuse me, from the Virgin Islands, St. Thomas and the U.S. Virgin Islands who played high school basketball in Massachusetts. One for two during that trip. South Carolina on the board first. 2-10 into this ball game. There's a steal from Herbert Harrigan. Stops in transition too strong. And then tracks down her own miss for another possession here early on. Just a glimpse of her athleticism. She loves st sitting back, waiting on that steal. Reaching foul here, call it on. Tori Lewis as Harris worked from left to right. Coach John happy already with the effort on the defensive glass. Her second season at the helm. 110 wins, most of them coming at her previous stop at Jacksonville, trying to do what Don Staley did in Columbia here in Oxford. Get a program to New Heights. Staley took over a South Carolina program that was on the low end of the SEC and has turned them into a perennial powerhouse team. Surely one of the favorites for this season in the NCAA tournament. But here is a turnover as Harris was on the baseline when she took that ball away from Boston. Carolina coming out with some pressure here. Here's Cook watching Mimi Reed. Backdoor cut for Smith, batted away, intercepted. Numbers favoring the Gamecocks. Four on two, the step around from Zaya Cook, the freshman out of Toledo, Ohio. 15 points per game in SEC action here this season. That's the thing about South, South Carolina, their transition offense is so quick and so powerful. If they get on a run, they get the lead quickly. Three minutes into this ball game. Ole Miss still looking for their first bucket. Jayla Alexander from Pearl, Mississippi, the former number one player in the high school level in this state. Giant swat from Herbert Harrigan, third all-time in Gamecock history in blocks. Going the other way is South Carolina. Harris, the lob down low to Makia Herbert Harrigan. This will be a foul on the baseline on Taylor Smith. Harrigan showing, Herbert Harrigan showing what she's able to do, causing turnovers, getting down low, and causing some havoc in the blocks. She's a player that can do it all. She's physical, but she's also agile. 3-0 lead for the Gamecocks. Taisha Harris, 52 from Noblesville, Indiana, pulling the trigger underneath her own basket. Here's Cook, the turnaround, jump shot, no good. And Harris is going to run through the Rebel defense and pull down the offensive board. Beal, nice move, gets to her left hand, no good. Boston rips it away from Cage. Alexander nearly rips it away from her. Ends up in the hands of Beal for the easy lay-in. Beal from Rock Island, Illinois. Three-time Illinois Gatorade Player of the Year. A consensus All-American. They're really excited about what her future is in Columbia. Already talked about her defensive prowess. She'll be matched up with Deja Cage. Length advantage surely in favor of number 12. And Garnet. One to shoot. Mimi Reed will not get that shot off. There is the Gamecock defense that's holding opponents to just 57 points per game. It's been a continual problem for Ole Miss so far this season, letting the shot clock run out, just not running their motion offense or getting a shot off. Pick and roll was unsuccessful there as that ball could not find the hands of Boston. She'll set the screen here, 10 to shoot for the Gamecocks. Harris in and out, rebounded by Ianla Kitchens, the sophomore from Lithonia, Georgia. shoot again for Ole Miss. Cage being trapped towards the sideline, throws it off the 
shins of Mimi Reed. That's another turnover for the Rebels. Their fifth early on in this game. Five points up on the board for the Gamecocks as well. This ball's going to eventually find Reed Beal underneath the basket. A defensive and offensive all-star for the South Carolina team. The Gamecocks lead by five early on. For the first time ever, a number one AP team, men's or women, has come to the pavilion at Ole Miss. South Carolina was the last number one team to visit Oxford, but they played back at the Tad Pad, a 77-59 win for the Gamecocks here in Oxford back in 2015. You have to go all the way back to 1977, a one-point win for Ole Miss over Delta State. That is the last time Ole Miss, and the only time Ole Miss, has beaten a number one opponent. Ole Miss had their alumni dinner a week ago and some of the players from that game were there and they got up and told the story and had the players stand up. That's one that they really remember. For those not familiar, Delta State a power in the 70s. Seth Austin Lindsay, Roy with you from the pavilion at Ole Miss. Gamecocks leading 5 nothing early on. 4.45 to go here in the first quarter. Beal swings it over to Ty Harris. Down low, Herbert Harrigan. That's another quick foul on Taylor Smith, her second. Smith, the sophomore out of Marietta, Georgia. All of these Rebels are going to have tough tasks defensively, but the height advantage there for Herbert Harrigan, 6'2", the senior out of Pembroke Pines, Florida. It's the first free throw as the Gamecocks already in the bonus. 76% from the stripe this season is Kiki Herbert Harrigan. Gamecocks now by seven. Coming out in the press again to try to force some Ole Miss mistakes. The Rebels already with five turnovers in this game. No points up on the board yet. As they try to figure out a way to penetrate this Gamecock defense. So much length, so much athleticism. Reed finds Kitchens down low who had the clear out on Boston but couldn't handle the pass. And that'll be turnover number six. And South Carolina's done a really good job of getting Ole Miss rushed with the trap trap defense, the double teams, giving them fits right now. South Carolina on the other end, just two for nine. They're getting their looks offensively. Herbert Harrigan, the reverse layup. That was pretty. Nine-nothing now, South Carolina. And when you think about a post player, a forward that is able to be agile and create her own shot, she's the player that I think of. You do not want to take her one-on-one. No, you do not. Reed getting in the lane with the left hand, tosses up a shot off the back end of the iron. Going the other way is South Carolina. Long pass ahead from Harris to Herbert Harrigan, senior to senior. Herbert Harrigan on the season, 12.7 points per contest, one of four Gamecocks in double figures here in 2020. Let's take another look at that reverse layup. That is where she's at her best. 3.30 to go here in quarter number one. This is Jayla Alexander being watched by the senior, Harris. Alexander had double figures in the loss against Mississippi State and Starkville on Sunday. Reed, nice little step around, up off the glass, no good. Off the hands of Kitchens going the other way now. A couple of good looks on back-to-back -back possessions as Ayala Kitchens checks back in. She had the want to a few possessions to go down in the low blocks going up against the high school All-American Boston. We'll see if Ole Miss continues to have a desire to go down low against this very tall South Carolina team. Herbert Harrigan feeling it right now. Baseline jump shot goes. South Carolina starting off the first quarter on a 13-0 run. Uh, she's definitely getting heated up, isn't she? Gamecocks known for their first quarter dominance. They're outscoring opponents by 12 points in SEC games in the first quarter alone. Zaya Cook picks up her first foul. When you talk about Ole Miss on the other hand, on Sunday they scored six points in Starkville but gave up 30 against Mississippi State. That's never the first quarter you want to have against anybody, particularly your rivals. 3 quarters of the first frame gone and Ole Miss still looking for that first bucket. Kitchens working down low. She ended up clearing out some space 
for Jayla Alexander, who hasn't batted away, but she's the last one to touch it. And another turnover for Ole Miss. Alexander's going to take a seat. Deja Cage comes back into the game. 31, the junior from uh, Chicago, Illinois. Started her career at DePaul. Blue Demons ranked 11th in the country this season. Here's Harris, the reigning ESPNW Player of the Week. 14 points, 5 assists in the two games. And there's Cook going up off the glass. 15-0 South Carolina, two minutes to go in quarter number one. So you can guarantee if Cook gets the ball in her hand, she's got her eyes on the prize. She's trying to get herself all the way to the rim. As the player of the year at the D2 level in Ohio. Reed lobs it out for Deja Cage. We saw Jordan Horston earlier this season, a freshman out of Columbus. Cook from Toledo, Ohio. A couple good products coming out of the Buckeye State coming to the SEC here in 2019-2020. Feel left open on the wing, shuffled her feet before she drove. Don Staley pulling in the number one recruiting class that involves those three starters. Also has Leticia Ami here. Canadian international who enrolled in January of 2019 suffered an injury much like Caitlin McGee who came in for Ole Miss this season and is getting a chance to rehab and minus the injury at least coming in early and getting a chance to get in the weight room and be prepared for the SEC when her first season comes around. Seth, when you have freshmen that are able to get this kind of experience in their first year, that really sets your program up. Not that they aren't already uber successful. It's just a very, very bright future at South Carolina. Well, Cook picked up her second foul here in the first quarter, so she's replaced by Destiny Henderson, who's coming on as of late. Elbow jump shot no good from Banks, rebounded by Harris. She does it all, averaging three and a half boards per game to go along with her SEC best five assists per contest. Would get one if that one would have dropped. Instead, it ricochets off the top of the backboard and out of play. Alexander back in for Ole Miss for the first time. Lily Grissett comes into the game for South Carolina. Bench scoring a huge factor for South Carolina. They get 26 points per game off the bench. The players just accept their roles, know that when they come out of their seat, they better be ready to play. Yeah, that's just a testament to Coach Staley, too, because that was one of the areas going into the last Georgia game that she wanted to improve on, even with that kind of productivity from them. It still wasn't good enough. Five, five to shoot here for Alexander. Spins away. Left it short. I'm sorry, I cut you off there no, at the end that's of that okay. play. Destiny Henderson, eight points and three assists per game, second on the team. Rudy Rankin into the game for the first time. The former student manager just a few weeks ago has been added to the roster for additional depth and more than just that. Got a start against Auburn last week. South Carolina holding for the final shot here in quarter number one. Harris goes right, works around one defender, kicks it out for Henderson for three. Nothing but net as she kind of got bumped into the front row seats over there on the near side. That'll end an 18-0 run. South Carolina blanks Ole Miss in the first quarter. And they're getting scoring from all over, including Henderson, who came off the bench. We talked all about their bench scoring in a perfect way at the buzzer for number three to get involved with a three. South Carolina, an 18 nothing lead after 10 minutes here in Oxford. Four top 25 teams, including the top ranked team, highlight our women's basketball doubleheader next Thursday on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Number nine, Mississippi State squares off against number 22, Tennessee in Knoxville at 6.30 Eastern, 5.30 Central. Then number one, South Carolina taking on number 25, Arkansas at Bud Walton Arena. Of course, the sports world shook by the news on Sunday of the tragic death 
of Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna, and seven others in a helicopter crash in Calabasas, California. The two-time Olympic medalist, five-time champion, and MVP, a Philadelphia native, as is Dawn Staley, and she's wearing custom Kobe Bryant sneakers here this evening to honor the NBA legend before the game. South Carolina had warm-ups on also to honor the Black Mamba. There's Henderson, offensive foul as Banks hits the deck, gets up with some emotion. That's good to see if your Ole Miss down 18 nothing, held scoreless in the first 10 minutes. Try to create your own positive vibes moving forward. Yeah, you want to see the fire still burning. I like the enthusiasm from Banks. Ole Miss with two bigs into the game for I believe the first time in this contest with both Banks and Kitchens in the contest. Kitchens from the high post over to Tori Lewis, back to Mimi Reed. Two to shoot, Tori Lewis lets it fly wide to the right and does not make contact with the iron. That'll be a shot clock violation for the Rebs. Ole Miss 0 for 10 to start this contest. What do they got to do differently, Lindsay, in order to find a way inside, find some shots that'd be more insistent for them? Well, Seth, I feel like that they've gotten a few good looks. Mimi Reed with her drives inside the paint. They just need to knock them down. I feel like their nerves kind of have them a little bit shook right now. Offensive board pulled in. South Carolina, again, the best team in the country on the offensive glass. Unfortunately for them, Victoria Saxton, sophomore from Rome, Georgia, was unable to put it up and in. She's into the game, as is Ticia Ami here. This is Rankin. Eventually finds Deja Cage. Here's Lily Grissett, six foot two. Plays the three, if you can imagine having an asset like that. Ty Harris with the steal, trying to go coast to coast and does. 12 points per contest. She's been in double figures in every SEC game so far this season. And she has certainly inserted herself as a potential SEC player of the year here in her senior campaign. I mean, what a floor general she has found her role between score and knowing when to turn the Jets on and when to pass it with her assist. She does not score 25 to 30 points per game like your typical player of the year does in a league. But when you add in her five assists, that's 10 to 15 points every game that she's responsible for as she distributes it to her teammates. And you see the lay in there from Saxton. So that adds up to about 30 points per game that she's good for every single night. That's right, Seth. And it's not just open passes. She sets her teammates up. 22-0 South Carolina. They've got 12 of those 22 in the paint. Cage tracks down that pass on the far side wing. The South Carolina staff wanted to travel. Rankin puts the ball down. Works the way around. Ami here, there's another interception by South Carolina and another turnover for the Rebels. Three shot clock violations on three straight possessions for the Rebels. And a timeout taken by Coach Go and her staff. The Rebels have turned the ball over 10 times. South Carolina continues to keep that goose egg up on the board as we return to Oxford in just a few moments. South Carolina Gamecocks, you ready to go on a fast break with me? Yes, I am. What do you do for fun other than play basketball? I rest. I sleep. What's the one song you need to hear before you go on the court? Any music by Lil Baby or NBA Youngboy. What's the one food you like to eat before you play? Salmon and pasta. From one fast break to another, Ty Harris with the steal. Goes coast to coast to lay it in. Lindsay, I think that this game has a chance to turn into a love affair between us and Ty Harris. Plays the game the right way, does everything, whether it comes to the intangibles or the stats that she puts up on the board every single night. She's so much fun to watch. We can continue our conversation that she is a legitimate candidate to be player of the year here in the Southeastern Conference. She absolutely is. I appreciate her as an athlete. She is a four-year starter on this team. She's been around the block. Definitely the leader, definitely the floor general. But like you said, the consistency that she brings every night, it blows me away. 
She's got South Carolina out on top, 22-0. Rankins jumps in the lane there, gets the steal. Judy Rankin from Waynesboro, Mississippi, wearing the number 11 in powder tonight. See if she and her team can set up a scoring opportunity with 6.45 to play. This is Alexander, a freshman from Pearl. Picks up her dribble, gets it to Mimi Reed. She'll get into the lane, let a shot go. It's short, an offensive board pulled in by Kitchens, but she goes to the ground. Looking for help, gives it up for Dom Banks. Too strong, things just not falling for Ole Miss. Henderson in transition. A me here for three, top of the key, no good. Alexander wrestles away the ball. Running the floor was Banks, the pass too high for her and out of bounds. Turnover number 11 already for Ole Miss. Now when I watch a fast break like that, you see Alexander running with the ball in her hands, but the rest of her teammates got to get down the floor and help her out. Feel like she had no help with that. Zaya Cook, far side to a me here. Tough take inside here from Victoria Saxton, who was on the all-freshman team in the SEC a season ago. Five points and four rebounds for the Rome Georgia native. 6-2, playing 15 minutes per game. She'll go to the line for two here, hitting 57% of her free throws during this season. Six points, three rebounds, and three blocks for number five in the team's last game against Georgia. A 88-53 win in Athens. Coach Staley said that games like that is where you want to watch film and improve. And coming into that game, she said that her bench, players like Saxon, really stepped up and brought what she wanted them to. There's another giveaway by the Rebels. Cook, nice pass ahead to Henderson. Great job defensively from Alexander to get in possession, excuse me, into position and get her hands on that one. So a jump ball, turning things back over to the Rebels. Taylor Smith back into the game. 5-8 out of Marietta, Georgia. Five points, two rebounds per game. Alexander nearly loses the handle, picks it up, gets it to Tori Lewis. Reed drives with the left. The reverse layup high off the glass, no good, and last touch by Banks. Gamecock basketball. Boston back into the game. Aliyah Boston played at Worcester Academy in Massachusetts. She was a, also a three-time Gatorade Player of the Year in her state. Top post player in the 2019 class, and she's got as many SEC Freshman of the Week honors as the number that matches her jersey, four. Turns it over this time as Ole Miss heads in the opposite direction. Under five to play here in the first half. Ole Miss has turned the ball over 12 times. They are 0 for 13 from the field, and that's just been the kind of night that they've had so far. Tory Lewis is three in and out. Cook, shot fake outside for Henderson. No good offensive board by Grissett. She averages almost four rebounds per contest. Six points per game, and she's on the board offensively. Just a smart player. I love that she fell right to the weak side board because she knows that's more than likely where the shot's going to fall. South Carolina averaging 45 points per game in the paint. They've got 15 already. Cage lets the three fly off to the left. Boston pulls in the rebound. It's her fourth rebound of the game so far. Henderson. Boston has some range, and she shows it off there. <laughs> Wanted to prove to us that she can do it all. She's not just an inside player. That's just a blessing for Coach Don Staley to have. Sometimes you let Boston go to work down low. Sometimes you can pick and pop with her. And she shows off there that she's able to get it done. 
Alexander and Cage not on the same page there. Another turnover for the Rebels. Here's more on Aaliyah Boston. You can see what she's doing as a freshman. Do I need to say it again? A freshman here in the SEC already with eight double-doubles, averaging one in SEC action. Seth, that's incredible. Usually when players come into the SEC, they need to adapt. She's a player that comes in and just loves contact. She feeds off of it. Foul caught on Grissett. Read back into the game for Ole Miss. Four points, also a team best four assists per game this season. She'll call out the signals, bringing the ball up the floor, being watched closely by the Fort Myers, Florida native, Destiny Henderson. This is Cage on the near side wing. Pass down low to Kitchens, and a foul will be called on number 32 for Ole Miss as she was clearing out space down in the blocks. Ty Harris calling the signals for the Gamecocks as she's wont to do, gives it off to Henderson. Almost becoming a protege of Ty Harris at the point guard spot for South Carolina. But this is back-to-back -back possessions with a turnover for the Gamecocks. They've now got eight giveaways in this game. Something that you have to believe Coach Don Staley wants to clean up here at the end of the first half. Kitchens hands off to Reed. Reed's going to drive left again. Screen set up. Tori Lewis from the top of the key. Back end, no good. Rebound to Boston. Ami here's down low, wanting the ball. She gets it. Spins into some traffic. Goes up in to a body. No foul called on Kitchens. So a good job defensive I will miss. To make that a tough shot for L.A. down low. Yeah, great job doubling down. She had four jerseys on her. Good cut from Taylor Smith, an even better job earlier in that sequence by Reed to keep that ball from going out of play. But another missed shot from the Rebels. 0 for 16 to start the game, make it 17 with that shot there. They're getting some good looks, Seth. I just feel like none of them are falling. Tori Lewis, semi-open from the three-point line a few times. Yeah, that's a player you're going to put your money on if she's open from behind the arc. 86% of her made field goals in her Rebel career have come from downtown. Ole Miss averaging 56 points per contest this season. Yet to get on the board with under two to play in the first half. Harris a kick out to Beal for three. No good. Taylor Smith with the rebound. And she hits the gas right away to try to up the tempo for Ole Miss. They are much better in transition than they are in the half court. 90 seconds to play in quarter number two. South Carolina, 27, Ole Miss, zero. Cage utilizes the screen from Kitchens. Five to shoot. Lewis's three attempt is blocked. Harris, the lob ahead to Herbert Harrigan, was off the mark a little bit, and then the baseline jump shot, no good. South Carolina came away with the block on that last possession. They are best in the country at 8.3 blocks per game. Mimi Reed off the window and good, and that ends the scoring drought of almost 19 minutes here in the first half. And Boston with the quick answer off the offensive rebound. Second chance points. A big factor for South Carolina here this season. Almost 17 points per game coming off of offensive rebounds. <laughs> Lewis Jabs gets into the lane, leaves it short. Offensive rebound this time for Ole Miss. Shot clock is off. Mimi Reed's going to pull out, and they'll reset the offense here before they go into the locker room. Stripped by South Carolina. Harris going against the game clock at the top of the clee. 
<laughs> top of the key, bangs home a three. 32 to two. Gamecocks leading Ole Miss at the break. The fewest points scored in a half for Ole Miss. Previously, it was 11 on the road against Texas Tech in 2004. It's been a bit of both things. Ole Miss not getting the job done and South Carolina playing to the best of their abilities. 32 to two, South Carolina leads at halftime. Halftime in Oxford, it's been all Gamecocks so far. They lead Ole Miss 32 to two. Down court side, Seth Austin alongside Lindsey Roy. Lindsey, it's been a bit of both. Ole Miss struggling, South Carolina running at full go. They are the number one team in the country, but they're going to be coming out here trying to complete this game in a successful manner. What does Ole Miss have to do to make the second half a little more competitive? Yeah, Ole Miss really needs somebody to step up on the offensive end. I feel like that South Carolina's defense is giving Ole Miss fits right now with the stat, with the traps. Also, shot clock violations. Ole Miss not able to get a shot off. Somebody needs to step up on the offensive end. Once again, South Carolina with a very balanced output offensively for their team. Makia Herbert Harrigan leading the way with eight points. What has she done so far that's caught your eye? She's so efficient. She is the queen when it comes to creating her own shot. You see there, just give her a little bit of space. She's going to knock it down. I feel like she's coming to this game guns blazing. She's playing with so much confidence and knocking down everything that she shoots. Eight points, 50% from the field, also two for two at the free throw line. For Ole Miss, they average 18 turnovers per game. They had 15 in the first half. That's not something you can do against teams in the bottom half of the league, let alone the number one team in the country. No, you see there the traps that South Carolina is throwing at Ole Miss and the blocks and everything. It's just giving Ole Miss so many fits. South Carolina has the length. They've got the aggression, and Ole Miss is having a tough time handling it. Ole Miss it. was 1 for 20 in the first half. Did not score until about a minute and change left before going to the break at the half. South Carolina leading at 32 to 2. The second half of action from the Pavilion coming your way next. South Carolina 32, Ole Miss 2. The Gamecocks shot 43% from the field. Ole Miss just 1 for 20 in the game so far. They've turned the ball over 15 times. The Gamecocks have turned that into half of their points. The other half coming in points in the paint. Lindsey Roy, Seth Austin here with you for the second half. Lindsey, Ole Miss is going to want to come out with a little bit more energy here in this second half. What do they need to do early on in order to try to cut into this deficit? You know, Seth, I think the biggest part of it is you can't play scared. You have to play with aggression. Get yourself to the rim. Run your motion offense. I get it. South Carolina is the number one team in the entire country. It can be intimidating, but... They're playing intimidating, and they have two points on the board, so you have nothing to lose at this point. Lots of teams have struggled taking on this Gamecock unit here this season. Just one loss coming against Indiana earlier this year. In that game, the Gamecocks had just 26 points in the first half. The 32 they scored in the first half here is the lowest output they've had in SEC play, something positive to take if you were Ole Miss, all things considered but the Gamecocks coming out with a great offensive game plan. Get it down low for an early bucket, 34 to two. Let's see what Ole Miss has offensively after being able to draw it up on the whiteboard maybe here at halftime. Banks was trying to get down low, ended up falling, which led to a travel and another turnover for Ole Miss. That's the 16th giveaway for Ole Miss here in this game. Zaya Cook back to the team's leading scorer, Herbert Harrigan, eight points in the first half for number 21 in Garnet. Wake up, wake up! Here's Boston. She had a quiet half offensively. Ball hits the deck. From her backside, Cook was able to find a cutting teammate. It was Beal. Single digits now as Taisha Harris pulls from three, and she's hit her last two shots, both of them from downtown. Ty Harris, I feel like she has been so incredibly effective tonight, especially in running the transition. But just like that right there, if you give her an ounce of daylight, she's going to pull the trigger. Harris now has eight, two for two from downtown. Alexander thought about answering with a three of her own. Instead, she'll reset. Now the Rebels have seven to shoot. Cage, nice drive in, too strong on the lay-in, rebounded by Herbert Harrigan. Ty Harris 
Brings the ball up the floor for the Gamecocks. She's going to get it out to Cook for three in the corner, way off the mark. Not something you usually say with the freshman All-American. Reed's done a good job utilizing her left hand all game long to get into the lane. A good shot there, just won't go. Here's Cook in transition off the window. Too strong. Offensive rebounded by Beal. Batted out by Banks. It goes right to the Gamecocks. Eventually into the hands of Beal. Then to Cook. Nice pass. Freshman to freshman. Cook to Boston for the lay-in. That's one area that South Carolina excels at is being selfless with the basketball. You saw there, Cook had an open look, but why not get the dish? Boston now with seven points. She's three of three from the field. Averaging 13 and a half points per game and a team best nine rebounds per contest. Here's a turnover from South Carolina. Harris and Beal not on the same page. Cook two assists per game. Saw no one in the lane. And what did she do, Lindsay Roy? Dish it off. Dish it off to your teammate. That was pretty. Nice teamwork there by the Gamecocks. Cook a three-time All-State product out of Rogers High School in Toledo, Ohio. And there's the talented duo. Also, you can throw in Bree Beal in that mix as well. And a me here as well as Amy Reed lays it in. For the top 11 prospects in the 2019 class are at South Carolina. That was the number one recruiting class in the country. And a lot of people, a lot of pundits, a lot of talking heads like us, Lindsay, said this Gamecock team was a true contender in 2021. But you may have misrepresented thought inappropriately of what Ty Harris and Kiki Herbert Harrigan have meant to this South Carolina program. They were around in 2017 when the Gamecocks lifted the national championship trophy. They know how to win, they know how to get a team there. And these freshmen have been along for the ride. They're just following the seniors lead. So when you have all that talent infused with the leadership and the know-how, that's what's making South Carolina such a dangerous team. Yeah, this is a team that you definitely can't overlook. And watching them play, Seth, I see mistakes. I see things that they do that are incorrect or maybe even freshman mistakes, but they make up for it in the competitiveness that they play with in their offensive rebound and their hustle and their heart. This team's gonna have a fun run. Don Staley said they are committed to winning. They know what their roles are and whether they're scoring 20 or two, they relish in their teammates' success. This is a big part of it right here. Ty Harris gets in the lane, lets the shot go, and it's money. You know, Seth, that's something that we talked to Don, Don Staley about was finding the players that can actually buy into that, knowing their role and being okay, whether it's come, coming off the bench or being the leading assist. It's finding those players that can buy into what you're selling. Harrison double figures, and again, she's done it in eight straight SEC outings. Beal puts a hand in Cage's face. Kitchens tries to free her up with a screen. And there's a block from Boston. Number one on the team, 2.8 blocks per game. That's 15th best in the country. We showed you the numbers earlier. Eight blocks per game for South Carolina. That's the best in the country. Nice set piece out of the inbound play underneath their own basket for Ole Miss, but the Cage lay in no good. But pull in the offensive rebound and get another opportunity here. Kitchen's working down low, Rankin. He's going to try to get it down there to her. Between the time I said Kitchens is working and the feed got down there, it was a three-second violation for number 32. Well, she was definitely working, though. <laughs> Give her credit. She's been putting in the effort all evening long trying to get some space down low, whether it's against a me here or Boston, the freshman. H2 out to Bree Beal. She's going to work herself around the defense, and that's the stuff that Dawn Staley and the South Carolina coaching staff excited about with number 12. She'll be a project of getting some 
real action against SEC teams. A starter, one of the best defenders on the team, but the more she gets in the weight room and works with this coaching staff, she can really be something special. Now, when you talk about a player that really can do it all, Bill is one of those players. Paige frees herself up off the window and good. First player not named Mimi Reed to score for Ole Miss here in this game. Here's Zaya Cook working from right to left. Boston's trying to return the favor down low. Instead, she'll look to set the screen on Rankin, but a blocking foul on number 11. That'll lead to a timeout on the floor. South Carolina picking up where they left off in the first half. They're leading Ole Miss on the road, 44 to 6. Saturday, we've got another men's hoops doubleheader for you right here on the SEC Network and on the ESPN app. Arkansas travels to take on Alabama at Colwell Coliseum in our first game at 6 Eastern, 5 Central. Then we'll take you to Historic Memorial Gymnasium in Nashville for Vanderbilt hosting Florida. That's all Saturday on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Ty Harris having a Ty Harris level game in double figures for the eighth time here in SEC play. You know, just recently became the second player in Gamecock history with 1,000 points and 600 career assists. Gives you every idea of what you need to know about number 52. We said earlier, Seth, that this was going to be a love fest for us and Ty Harris, and it certainly is. I love watching her play. I love how commanding she is. I love the way that she runs her team. That was Olivia Thompson into the game for the first time, a three-point specialist for the Gamecocks. Too strong on her first attempt from the wing. Almost tracked down her own miss. Instead, it was a rebound by Ole Miss and Tootie Rankin. Now here come the Rebels offensively down 44 to 6. Kitchens down low. That's a strong take there from the sophomore and a much needed one. Kitchens, I appreciate the work that she has done tonight. I feel like she's taken zero plays off. There's a lob inside, a mismatch. A me here with the lay-in, the Canadian international, six foot four out of Mississauga, Ontario. See South Carolina continuing with their MO, 26 points in the paint, averaging 45 per game. That's just imposing your will on opponents. Tend to shoot for Ole Miss. Here's Deja Cage on the wing, working from left to right. Finds Tootie Rankin on the baseline. She'll leave it short. But the former student manager hustling, getting in there and trying to get another possession for Ole Miss. And does so with the jump ball. That's what Coach Yo loves about Tootie is she leaves it all on the court. She brings the heart. Junior from Waynesboro, Mississippi, out of Wayne County High School. Leaf Wayne County Ward Eagles, is that right? I believe it is. A little Auburn flair here in the state of Mississippi. Rankin with another shot again. It was left short, but once again trying to hustle her way to an offensive rebound. Rankin, an incredible story, was a student manager on the Ole Miss team until right before the Missouri game. She was added to the roster. Did play at the junior college level the past two years at Southwest Mississippi Community College, where she was third on the team in scoring. Also was a 4-0 student in biochemistry. That tells you the kind of kid that Coach Yo added to the roster. And just to tack on to that, she is always wearing a smile. Maybe not on the court, but she is one of the sweetest people I have ever met. Mimi Reed on the far side. She's got four points. Four of Ole Misses, eight. Make it six now as she goes off the glass. South Carolina by 38. Henderson showing off the wheels, going coast to coast. A foul called on Ole Miss. Called on Deja Cage. It's Deja's first foul. It'll put Destiny Henderson at the line, the sophomore out of Fort Myers, Florida. 24 minutes per game, eight points, three rebounds, and just under three assists per contest. Second on the team in the assist category, really able to model her game a bunch off of Ty Harris. Yeah, if you're going to have a role model. Pretty good one to have. <laughs> yes, it is. Henderson.
Jackson coming off of a 14-point outing with six rebounds and six assists against Georgia on Sunday. A pair of subs come in for Ole Miss. Score just two points in the first half in its entirety. They've got eight here in the third quarter. A lot of the similar looks they had in the first half, just a little bit more success when they get the shots off. Yeah, I feel like they sh shook the nerves off a little bit. Start playing a little bit of Ole Miss basketball. Cage, step back three on the way, too strong. Rebounded here by Saxton. Almost four rebounds per game for number five. Thompson in the corner, back to Henderson. Near steal there from Mimi Reed. Lily Grissett just missed on the reverse layup there, but showing off the athleticism and what she brings as a small forward at six foot two, a real combo guard. There is Mimi Reed. You saw the burst of emotion off of that lay in from the redshirt sophomore. Thompson from three, knocks it home. Thompson now has seven games here in her freshman season where she's hit a three pointer. Hit 105 threes as a junior at Lexington High School. It's second all time in the state of South Carolina. Makes you wonder who hit the most threes in a season. Goodness gracious, she can light it up. Jayla Alexander, the answer along too. Now we go back and forth with some scoring. This is good to see. L.A. A me here. She's no stranger to some physical inside basketball. Thirty seconds left on the third quarter clock. 55-14, South Carolina leading Ole Miss. Ten to shoot now for the Rebels. Taylor Smith picks up her dribble and takes steps, giving things back to the Gamecocks. 24.7 seconds to play, so the shot clock is off here for the final possession you would have to imagine for South Carolina. Gamecocks shooting 50% from the field. This is coming off of a game where they hit 60% of their shots against the Bulldogs in Athens. And that's 60%, not even their best outing on the season. They had a game where they shot better than that here this year. Baseline shot, no good. Offensive rebound, the M.O. for South Carolina. Victoria Saxon, the putback. And South Carolina able to take a 43-point lead into the fourth quarter. Thompson, the freshman from Lexington, South Carolina, a pure sharp shooter, helping South Carolina add to their lead. Once again, 57-14 South Carolina as we head to the final 10 minutes of action. South Carolina leading Ole Miss 57-14, heading to the fourth quarter here in Oxford. And SEC action, the Gamecocks averaging 89 points per game. And this season, they're getting about a quarter of that, more of that, out of their bench production. 26.4 points per game of the bench, shooting north of 30% from the field. But when you throw out names like Saxton, Amihir, Grissett, that's the kind of a bench that you have when you're going to make a deep run in the NCAA tournament. And that's what South Carolina has their sights on, set on here in 2020. Yeah, Seth, and those are players, too, that really know their roles. They're okay with that. They're okay with coming off the bench and keeping that momentum up. But it's just crazy to me that after the Alabama game, Coach Staley said that she wanted to go home and watch some film because she felt like her bench Fell off a little bit, the, the momentum dropped, but after Georgia, she was back very, very pleased with it. But that's just the kind of standards that she has. There's Grissett back to Henderson. Inside feed to a me here. A foul will be called on Taylor Smith. Third foul on number 21. Appreciate you spending part of your Thursday night with us here in Oxford. Seth Austin, Lindsey Roy with you from the Pavilion at Ole Miss. First ever time a number one team, men's or women, have come into this new building open just a few seasons ago. Gamecocks appearing as though they're going to come away with their 20th win of the season. Ami here showing the handles off a little bit. Spins away a step through, and that is just fantastic work 
from the red shirt freshman. What a move, gosh, what a move to be able to create a shot like that from the inside. Elise Weselick, Elisa Weselick into the game for South Carolina, number 32. You see her trying to close out on the baseline jump shot from Taylor Smith. Does not get there, and Smith gets on the board offensively for the 16th point of the night for Ole Miss. One more look at this post work. Clinical from number 15 in Garnet. It's not often that you have a post player that can create her own shot like that. Pick it up. What a beautiful up and under move. Remember, she joined this team at the back end of her senior year of high school because had an injury, was able to enroll early, get some get some uh, work rehabilitating her injury. Have to believe she was able to sit in film work and strategy with the coaches and and with that kind of skill, and you put it all together, that's the kind of output you get. Cage utilizing the screen from Kitchens, mid-range jump shot good from Deja. Cage up to four points in the game. There was a meet here running the floor again. Last touch by Ole Miss, it'll stay down here. Me here, a member of the player pool for the Canadian national team. She also became the first ever Canadian woman to dunk. 15 years old with that 6'10 wingspan. Leticia Ami here was throwing down north of the border. <laughs> it doesn't even surprise me. <laughs> Mimi Reed, eight points in this game. That's a team best. Alexander finding Cage on the wing. Air balls it too strong. Rebounded by Henderson. Henderson looking to go all the way from one baseline to the other and does. She's got nine points on three of four shooting. Talked about it a few times about how she reminds us of Ty Harris, but that move right there definitely did. We were talking about bench scoring. Did not mention her name, but she is the team's leader in bench scoring. She's got seven double-digit games, and if she is able to score again before the clock hits zero, she will be in double figures again. Westlick's shot is redirected by Deja Cage. This is just one on five right here. Split the defense, got herself all the way to the rim. That's the kind of thing that you cannot teach a player. You are just, you either have that or you don't. She's just got that athletic, competitive mentality. Destiny Henderson's going to take a breather here. Isaiah Cook with the shot, no good, but a chance to go to the line for two. So Destiny Henderson was the top point guard in the 2018 signing class. Zaya Cook, the top point guard in the 2019 recruiting class. We already talked about Ty Harris being the all-time leader and assist in South Carolina program history. You think these point guards like going to play for Don Staley? <laughs> I think they do. I mean, wouldn't you if you were a point guard? Well, I wasn't. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Thompson looking for another three too strong. I did not have the handles necessary to operate a basketball <laughs> offense. You know, Seth, you talk about the recruiting class that Dawn Staley has had, and you have to remember her first couple years at South Carolina were a little bit rough. As Westlick buries a three. And I was talking to their SID earlier, and Coach Staley has the utmost respect for Coach Yo and said that her story and journey kind of reminds her of herself. So hopefully Coach Yo can have the same outcome that and success that Coach Staley has had. Cage for three, no good. The thing Don Staley said earlier today was there was times early on in her career in South Carolina where she wondered if she had made a huge mistake taking that jump in her career, taking over that program. And the one thing she knows about Coach Yo is that 
with her positive attitude, she knows that Coach Yo has never had thoughts like that. Did I make a mistake coming here? Was this a bad decision? She has that intuitiveness, the belief that she's going to get a turnaround. And when you talk about recruiting classes, Coach McPhee McEwen is bringing in the number 13 class in the country that's best in the SEC. Caitlin McG already on campus. Madison Scott just named a McDonald's All-American. The help is coming for her, so to speak. You add Danetta Johnson, you add Andasia Puckett on the bench. Two players who are transferring in, one from Georgia, one from Cincinnati. They cannot play due to NCAA transfer rules. The help is coming. There is talent on the way to help her run her kind of system. Right now, she's showing here in the second half, though. She's getting the group that she has to play hard with the number one team in the country here on their floor. Yeah, Coach Yo, she definitely has the athletes in the wings just waiting on their time to come join her squad. But also have to say, I mean, Coach Staley is a big fan of Coach Yo, and if you get that stamp of approval, if you're an Ole Miss fan, that should be enough for you to believe in what she's trying to build here. Mimi Reed having herself a good game, all things considered. Eight points. Nine now with the free throw. Both free throws good from Mimi Reed. That's the first two free throws of the game for Ole Miss deep into the fourth quarter. Three ball from Ami here. Showed off the footwork in the low post. I mean, what more can you say about number 15? I'm just over here shaking my head because you're not supposed to have a post player that can work like she does on the inside and stretch the defense out to the three-point line. Smith, another baseline. Jumper is knocked down. She's two for four in the game. We always talk about players who are going to step up, and Taylor Smith has those kinds of games where you can see her being a contributor offensively, 18 points in the season opener. In fact, in wins, she's averaging eight points per game, which is two or three times her season average. Taylor Smith, she's one of those players I feel like her points come in pocket. She shows glimpses of where she could be this really big impact player, but you only see it every now and then when Ole Miss needs her to. Approaching the five minute mark here in the fourth quarter. Smith driving all the way into the lane. No good, batted out of bounds by Kitchens. Here's Zaya Cook operating the offense, under five to play. Ami here thought about the three. Instead, she's going to drive all the way in and lay it off the window with the left hand. Enough English to get it to fall. Ami here in double figures. She's got 11, averaging of four and a half points per game, so well above that mark as South Carolina leads Ole Miss by 50 points with 4.38 to play. gone in Ole Miss's direction here in this game. Mimi Reed has been one of the positives. Ten points on four of nine shooting. She's been pretty fearless of this number one team all night long. Yeah, Mimi Reed, I feel like she came out of the gate really wanting to compete in this game, and she was the one player that stepped up, didn't play scared at all, really made something happen for Ole Miss offensively. She's also played in 34 minutes so far in this game. She's been a gamer for Ole Miss. You see the numbers, ten points on four of nine shooting. That doubles up her season average for scoring. She'll continue to try to be a bright spot in the final four minutes and change here against the number one team in the country. Seth Austin, Lindsey Roy with you from the pavilion. Ole Miss down by 50, looking to get some more points up on the board. Cage finds Rankin. Rankin's gonna bounce it a bit and then get it back to Cage. Single digits on the shot clock for Ole Miss. Kitchens calling for the ball down low. Inside out, game finds Rankin, no good. An offensive board pulled in by Kitchens. Another player who's had a very good game for Ole Miss, again, all things considered. 
Kitchens now with five boards. She's also got two points. Good cut to the basket there. And Ami here shows off the defense and rejects that. Inside of four now, no look pass from Cook to Lily Grissett. And Grissett's got a chance to go to the line and make it a three point play. Oh, that pass. Oh my goodness. One more look at the pass from the freshman, my goodness. That is just pure filth. Grissett able to finish it. Cook spins away from the defense. When we come back, we'll have Grissett at the line. Gymnastics takes over the SEC Network every Friday night. And tomorrow, number 20, Missouri hosts number 14, Arkansas and Columbia at 7 Eastern and 6 Central. Then it's number 7, Alabama, and number 6, LSU from Baton Rouge. Friday Night Heights also streaming live on the ESPN app. South Carolina trying to put together a complete game here against Ole Miss because the gauntlet is coming. They take on Tennessee this Sunday on ESPN2. Then they're on the road in Fayetteville on the 6th before that big time matchup against UConn. They're a little bit better built than what you would have thought Tennessee was. A lot of freshmen on that Lady Vol squad and Tennessee had the lead at the break against UConn on the road in Hartville, on Hartford. So South Carolina's trying to work their game to a level where they're gonna go compete with UConn. I mean, that's a potential matchup of two final four teams, and I'm already excited for them. Glad South Carolina's not thinking about it too much here, taking on Ole Miss tonight. They can't look that far ahead, but we can. Yeah, that game, I'm definitely gonna be sitting in front of my TV watching that one. That's two of the greats, like you said. That could be potential final four. The schedule makes me wanna take a deep breath for Coach <laughs> Staley and, and her squad, because it's a test. Maybe. Coach Harper and Coach Staley will exchange some ideas because Kelly Harper, your number one, coaching Tennessee. Whatever her game plan was coming into the game was a good one to lead the Huskies at the break. But then Gino Oriema winning that adjustments battle as UConn was able to come away with a 15-point win at Hartford. Seth, I don't know, but I'm going to ask your personal opinion. Do you think that's something that coaches do if you're in the SEC? Do you think you kind of collaborate together and I would like to think that coaches root for the SEC against other conferences I would like to think so too whether they share the information necessary to get the job done I'm, I'm supposed to be asking you questions like that <laughs> I not the other way around I need answers on this one though I want to know baseline Dang. jumper good for the Rebels it was Deja Cage she's up to six points and then Rankin showing why she's been a pest at practice all these months. Tori Lewis up and she's stripped. It's gonna stay here with the Rebels though. Three minutes to play here at the Pavilion at Ole Miss. 77-24 as Mimi Reed, the hesitation <laughs> dribble. She is having herself a night. Yeah, she is. I mean, I, I feel like we've seen that several times tonight for Mimi Reed. My goodness. L.A. from downtown. She's got 14 in the game. Six of eight shooting, two of three from behind the arc. Here's Dominique Banks, the hook shot, too strong. Good look for 13 in powder. Henderson up ahead to Grissett. Grissett's gonna spin, get up in the air, and she's gonna miss that one, but track down her own miss. Kick it out to Henderson, to Weslick, who's already got a three. She'll try a step back, no good. Okay, he's gonna drive the right side out to Rankin. She'll pump. Go down the left baseline up, and she's going to the line for two. Ole Miss able to run that entire set without Tori Lewis having two shoes. Free throws will give 44 a shot to get back into her kicks. Ole Miss couldn't tell with the red socks. 
So he was just kind of sitting out along the three-point line. And that's the other thing, that's her home anyways on offense out behind the arc. So never would have known that she was trying to stay away from the action. Rankin hits the first free throw. It's her first points of the game. Rashandra Rankin, again, added to the roster just before the Missouri game a few weeks ago. And one thing Coach Yo said is she's going to play with full effort the entire game as you see her hustling up the floor with Destiny Henderson. Fast down low looking for Ami here. Cage is going to be called for the foul. Second personal on Deja. That puts the Gamecocks in the bonus here in the final minute 43. Lots to talk about the top scoring freshman on this South Carolina team, Cook Boston. But Ami here, here against Ole Miss, showing that in a couple years, she's going to be a force to be reckoned with. It just blows me away how versatile she is. I and mean, she it can stretch the court. But look how tall she is. It's unreal. 6'10 wingspan as she bodies up. Banks down low. Rankin's going to hop into her enemy here. Just slots it away. Final 90 seconds here between the Gamecocks and Rebels. Henderson running the floor for South Carolina. Leaves it for Thompson, who misses on the three. Offensive board, Grissette. She'll pick it up and lay it in for the easy bucket. Dominique Banks gets Ole Miss to 30 in the game, and Henderson's going to slow up the pace. Ole Miss able to surpass their lowest point total of the year after scoring just two points in the first half. A much better offensive efficiency here in the second half as they get to 30. And there's Thompson with another three. Came into the game shooting 35% from distance. She now has nine three-pointers made this season. is going to still be looking for their first win in conference action. Their upcoming schedule looks like this. Alabama on Sunday, then Vanderbilt, Florida, Arkansas, and Kentucky. A couple matchups against some teams at the bottom half of the SEC standings. Saw some bright spots in this game. They got some good looks offensively. Shots just absolutely did not fall in the first half. But what can they take from this game? Seeing what a number one team looks like as they go on through the rest of their SEC gauntlet. Yeah, I think this is a great opportunity, Seth, for Coach Yo to sit down with some players individually and critique some individual games instead of the team as a unit because South Carolina, they play so good together. But check and see what your teams can do just with the individuals. South Carolina now 20-1, and one, off to their best start since 2014-2015 when they went to the program's first Final Four. They've hit 20 wins now in nine straight seasons. They take down South Carolina, excuse me, they take down Ole Miss. 87-32, final thoughts from Lindsey Roy. Yeah, I was excited to see South Carolina play coming into this game. I didn't know what to expect with three freshmen and two seniors that have started all season, but now I see why they play hard, they're competitors. Coach Staley's done such a fantastic job. I'm excited to see where their season takes them. You can catch the Gamecocks this Sunday taking on Tennessee, one Eastern on ESPN2, but that'll do it for us here from the Pavilion at Ole Miss. Thanks for spending some time with us here on the SEC Network Plus. Final score, South Carolina 87, Ole Miss 32. You can watch this game or any other game on our family of ESPN Networks by downloading the ESPN app or going online to watch ESPN.com. Once again, final score, Gamecocks 87, Rebels 32. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Enjoy the rest of your week and have a nice weekend, everybody.